Hello everybody, I thought it was really important that I filmed some sort of response to the Santa Barbara shooting, which happened yesterday, um, in which a 22-year-old man, who was also a men's rights activist, went out um, on the streets of Santa Barbara and decided to kill and wound other young women. Um, Elliot Roger was not a men's rights activist. The rhetoric in his video seems to tie him to the men's rights movement, which uses that kind of rhetoric and vernacular. Elliot Roger was not a men's rights activist. This started because the shooter was a member of several men's rights activists' websites and YouTube channels, and his hatred and entitlement to women definitely stemmed from seeing this material. Hello YouTube. Bane666 here. In my last installment of the series, I exposed the lies and lack of ethics of some aspects of the media, who are making the false claim that Elliot Roger was a member of the men's rights movement. In this installment I am going to show some of our fellow YouTubers, who have been propagating this propaganda either through ignorance about the men's rights movement, or through willful deception. I will let you decide which. Anyway, on with the show. The media is putting this down to mental illness, which is extremely offensive to all of us who are mentally ill. I'm sorry, but mental illness did not cause this attack. And then some people are trying to make the primary focus of their reactions to this about mental health issues. This bullshit about mental illness not being a possible factor also appeared in the articles and Tumblr comments I featured in my last video. I agree there is a stigma associated with mental illness, and I agree we shouldn't shun people who have mental illness. But that doesn't mean it's not a possible cause that should be discussed and explored. About the tragic death of this eight-year-old boy. His mother, 29-year-old Jessica Murphy, is accused of murdering him. And today she's going to be back in court for a felony hearing. We were there when police arrested Murphy last week. Police say she stabbed Jacob Noe last Wednesday inside their North Buffalo home. Mercy's family tells News 4 she was diagnosed last year with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The family says in her head, Murphy believed that she was killing her son out of love. It's a crime that stunned the neighborhood. June 20th, 2001, Andrea Yates called police to her home, showed them the bodies of her drowned children. Noah 7, John 5, Paul 3, Luke 2, and Mary 6 months. You know, I had no idea what was going on. I mean, I didn't know anything about mental illness or postpartum depression or psychosis or anything. If you have more and more children, the risk that you're going to have more of these episodes is higher. And with the psychotic episodes, they tend to get worse. After you drew the bathwater, what was your intent? What were you about to do? Okay, some very important points here before I continue. 1. Not everyone who commits a crime is mentally ill. 2. Not everyone who pleads mental illness as a defense is actually mentally ill. 3. Not everyone who is mentally ill is a criminal. But to dismiss mental illness as a possible cause or at least a contributing factor, without proper exploration of the facts, is absolutely crazy, excuse the pun. Mental illness is a blanket term that covers a very, very large spectrum of disorders. Well, a mental illness is a whole spectrum. It doesn't mean you're crazy. A lot of people would, would say that and it's, it's a misnomer. It's for people that are basically a lack of education. Uh, there's a wide spectrum of uh, things that comprise a mental illness. I think uh, everybody has been touched by the, you know, the paralyzing effects of like uh, depression and uh, the instability like bipolar disorder and uh, mental illness can cause people to be very fearful like with an anxiety disorder uh, they can be disorganized and, and paranoid and confused uh, related to dementia and psychosis and um, we have substance abuse uh, we have drugs and alcohol people using that all the time un unhealthy coping mechanisms uh, there are personality disorders sch schizophrenia uh, people hear and see things that aren't there. Um, they're very disorganized, paranoid, and uh, they need uh, medication basically to bring them down. That's, there's no, the amount of therapy that you give them is not going to be effective. They have to have uh, antipsychotic medication. And we have personality disorders, which are antisocial, where people have no remorse. They have no empathy for other people. Um, there's borderline personality, where people recreate chaotic relationships in their lives. And these are things that have to be, st they stay with people forever and they're very, very difficult to treat. Influenza, rabies and HIV all come under the blanket term of viral infection. 
yet it would be strange to hear someone say, I don't believe people die of AIDS, as I've had the common cold before, and it never killed me. Essentially, that same argument is being used here. The media is putting this down to mental illness, which is extremely offensive to all of us who are mentally ill. I'm sorry, but mental illness did not cause this attack. She may very well have a mental illness, and she may cope with it without any major problems, but that doesn't mean everyone with a mental illness is the same, or that all mental illness is the same. Maybe he was mentally ill. Maybe he was somewhere notable on the autistic spectrum. So f***ing what? I'm mentally ill. Several of my friends are mentally ill. Many of us registered notably on the autistic spectrum. None of us would go out killing women. I, will they listen now? I mean, there are women that are dead because of this. And yet the media is still determined to put this down to mental illness instead of misogyny, which... There is a very good reason why the media is talking about Elliot Rogers' mental health. From CNN. The assailant had been seeing therapists. Rogers' history of mental health issues was no secret to his family and the young man was seeing at least two therapists prior to his death. He had been seeing therapists on and off since he was eight, family friend Simon Astaire said. When he went to high school in Van Nuys, California, he met with a therapist pretty much every day, Astaire said. So we have someone with mental health problems, who had been seeing a therapist since the age of eight, but according to social justice warriors and feminists, the media shouldn't consider this a possible factor as it might hurt the feelings of others with mental health issues. I have to ask, wouldn't this be the perfect time to discuss mental health issues? Not all mental illnesses are going to cause people to commit crimes like those committed by Elliot Roger, but some mental health issues do increase the likelihood. We and the media shouldn't jump to the conclusion that mental illness was a cause or the only cause but it is perfectly justified to ask those questions. To ask, could mental illness be a factor? To dismiss it outright is nonsense. Next. Even for people who are somewhere notable on the autistic spectrum, purposely going out to slaughter women is not normal. And considering the US Department of Justice says that over three women per day in the United States are killed by a current or former partner, and many of those partners have no diagnosable mental illness that is associated with violence, it is not that issue that is causing this problem. But the news story specifically say that the beginning of his rampage was stabbing three people in his apartment. Stabbing, not shooting, stabbing. So this guy spends his whole video discussing that women are the victims of men, yet the one time he mentions the male victims of Elliot Roger. He refers to them as people. Not men, not male, but people. So I guess if you wanted to build a bias stereotype of females always being the victim, and males always being the victimizers, it would be advantageous to refer to female victims as their gender, but male victims as a gender-neutral term like people. Thus we never hear the word victim and male together. The only question left to ask is, was the subconscious or deliberate? I think it's also important to point out here that had the shooter been a young man of colour, the coverage would have been entirely different. Um, because he's a white boy, everyone's going on about how the poor boy was mentally ill, he was unstable, poor thing, and so much sympathy, sympathy is, thrown, is, is shown and so many people are trying to jump to defend him. I guarantee that would not be the case if this was a young man of colour that had done this. There'd be so much racism all over the place. People would be blaming were his culture and his family and and there'd be investigations really i guess she hasn't seen this then and that's, that's where do you again coming back to actually michael kimmel who has researched this very much uh the term aggrieved entitlement is something that is found in a lot of school shooters where white and, and again often white men don't just sort of kill the people who they think have wronged them they or they they want to take their own life and take the lives of others at the mm -hmm. same time so it's not just about my life is over and and this person who wronged me so i'm gonna get back at everyone else if i can't live so can no one else right. you know so it sounds to me like someone just blamed this whole thing on his race and gender on national TV. And as I showed in my last video, the statistics and conclusions she comes to are drastically wrong. But why let facts get in the way of a news story? And this white male hate has been going nuts right across the internet, thanks to feminists and social justice warriors. So it seems racism is wrong, unless it's against whites. Oh by the way, 
Elliot Roger was biracial. Just thought I'd mention that. And I know that all the examples I used were men violence on women. And I know it happens the other way, but it's not as common at all. And I'm not trying to take away from male victims experience or anything like that. Just overwhelming majority is women and people still don't take it seriously. So that's why we use yes all women and not yes all people because this is a problem mostly about women. It's the same reason we don't call gay rights people's rights because it's specifically about gay rights. It's about women and because women face struggles that are different than men and we need to recognize that and we need to start talking about that and so people stop dying. That's the bottom line. People are dying and it needs to stop. Women on a daily basis are assaulted, harassed, abused, harmed, killed by men who think that way. Maybe not all men are dangerous to women, but enough are that they are the rule. And we need to stop defending the exception to that rule and stop the rule instead. Okay, I have shown in past videos that statistics just do not back up the claim that only or the vast majority victims of domestic abuse are women. The actual numbers show at very least one third, up to one half, of the victims of domestic abuse are male. It's hard to get 100% reliable data as males are less likely to report domestic abuse, or less likely to be believed if they do, largely due to comments like the ones you just saw. I am not going to go into domestic violence stats in any more depth in this video, as I have made the case in detail in the past. Link below. But what about other forms of violence in society I hear you ask? Crime Victimology In 2011, surveys indicated more than 5.8 million violent victimizations and 17.1 million property victimizations took place in the United States. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, each property victimization corresponded to one household, while violent victimizations is the number of victims of a violent crime. Patterns are found within the victimology of crime in the United States. Overall, males, people with lower incomes, those younger than 25, and non-whites were more likely to report being the victim of crime. Income, gender, and age had the most dramatic effect on the chances of a person being victimized by crime, while the characteristic of race depended upon the crime being committed. In terms of gender, males were more likely to become crime victims than were females, with 79% of all murder victims being male. Males were twice as likely to be carjacked as females. In terms of income, households with a 2008 income of less than $15,000 were significantly more likely to have their homes burgled. So 79% of all murder victims in the United States are male, and males are twice as likely to be carjacked. So why aren't the social justice warriors, and the feminists, either preaching that we should stop violent crime for everyone, which would be the most logical and fair thing to do, or preaching we should help the largest demographic, which are males, as obviously this demographic is overrepresented and needs special attention. Why instead focus just on female victims, the least likely to be murdered or harmed? Could it be that male victims are invisible to these people? And my heart goes out to those women whose lives are gone now. Hope, will they listen now? I mean, there are women that are dead because of this, and yet the media is still determined to put this down to mental illness instead of misogyny, which... I'm sorry, but we have to talk about this now. This incident in Santa Barbara. I mean, there are women not alive today, innocent women with so much to contribute to this world, that are dead. I guess if you spend your entire life in the feminist echo chamber, where dissenting voices are quickly silenced, it's understandable how someone could begin to see a distorted view of the world, where male victims either don't exist, or simply don't matter. This is the real danger of dogma that can't be questioned. Just yesterday, on Twitter, before I knew about the tragedy, the shooting, I was talking about how um, cishet white males especially, how toxic and dangerous they are to queer women. And you really do notice the moment they think that they don't have a chance with you suddenly how they turn not all again but lots of them too many of them and um instantly i was i was linked to an article by a men's rights activist or an egalitarian i'm not sure which about female entitlement about women in, women's entitlement and the whole conversation was derailed okay so she refers to straight white males as toxic and dangerous and when people get pissed off at her racism and sexism 
which is exactly what it is, she then proceeds to play victim. If we changed any of her words to black, gay, or female, the vast majority of people would have no problem labeling her a bigot. And with good reason. But here she is preaching her bigotry at people, judging others based on their sex, race, and sexual orientation, and instead of realizing what a bigoted cunt she is, she actually has the nerve to play the victim card. This is what toxic feminism looks like. And then when those whom she is attacking with her bigotry try to respond, to use the counter-argument, she calls it derailing. Talk about being fucking entitled. It seems she is the only one who is allowed to have an opinion, and everyone else is just meant to shut up and listen to the bigoted opinions of this 19-year-old. Just fucking amazing. Men post on the internet on a daily basis, hell, on an hourly basis, messages of hate and violence against women. So much that it's considered normal and acceptable by law enforcement agencies. The reason why the police were able to come to that conclusion despite the hateful videos that this guy had definitely posted is that there's no shortage of that kind of crap. Hatred, violence against women all over the internet. That shouldn't be considered acceptable, normal, typical stuff. That should be considered grounds for investigation and, frankly, arrest. The messages of violence against women on the internet are themselves a form of violence against women that most of society just accepts and let happen. If you posted on the internet that you were going to do something violent to President Obama, you would have people knocking on your door. But if you say that about women, eh. Gee, I wonder, is it only men doing this to women? Let's have a look. Just a couple of examples from the Kill All Men hashtag on Twitter. Please note, to my knowledge there has never been a Kill All Women hashtag, and I suspect if there was one, it would be taken down within 24 hours. No doubt, some people will claim that this was just all a joke, which is always the reaction when women do this to men. But if that's true, if it is just a joke, and shouldn't be taken seriously, then why can't the same be said about trolls who harass women online? I have to ask, is this just another case of, only women count? And what about this site? And this is what double standards look like. It seems it's wrong for trolls to attack females on the internet, but perfectly acceptable for females, even more so if they are feminist females, to attack men. Why is it wrong for one group but okay for the other? And let me tell you, we do know as women in this society how scary it is a man's rejection and a man's entitlement. It's absolutely terrifying. Um, I'm bisexual, but I used to tell guys that I was a lesbian because I was so scared of what they do because um, of how entitled they felt to <clears throat> my body and basically they wanted to have sex with me and it is frightening because you don't know how these people are going to react. Let me give her some advice. If she wants guys to leave her alone, all she needs to do is talk to them for a couple of minutes with her winning personality. They won't be sticking around for long. My voice isn't important. The voices of those women. Those are important voices. Pay attention to them because they're everywhere. And for those who don't know, this is a, a man who um, went on a, well, he was essentially a, kind of an MRA dude who put all these videos up on YouTube and then went essentially on some fucking murder rampage because long story short ladies wouldn't fuck him while i do not want to minimize the importance of available mental health care while i do not want to minimize the importance of gun control the core problem in this particular case is that the patriarchal misogyny behind the men's rights movement turns people of any mental condition into directed violent people 
acting against women. On Friday evening, 22-year-old MRA Elliot Roger carried out a shooting at a school, the University of California, Santa... 22-year-old man, who was also a men's rights activist, went out um, on the streets of Santa Barbara. <laughs> oh, my God. Just, just, you know, it's people defending him, and these, these, these fucking losers, you know, who defend him, defend his actions, defend his mindset, you know, these, these you know, fucking men's rights activists, and they're just the, the fucking losers of the internet, man. Yes. And it's genuinely a white male, particularly a right wing one, as this MRA is. It's just an act of mental illness. And this. But the misogyny and hatred of the men's rights movement aimed him as a weapon at women. And he is not unique. This is not a one time thing that you can just brush off by calling him a madman who's, on, who's out of the ordinary. So the question I have to ask is are these comments by people who have been misled? Or are they willfully propagating misinformation? Let's be clear here for a moment. Despite what some aspects of the media have falsely reported, he was not subscribed to any MRA channels on YouTube, there is no evidence he ever visited MRA websites, and he never took part in men's rights activism. There is no evidence, or reason to believe, that he even knew of the existence of the men's rights movement. By all means please prove me wrong, if you can. Anyone who says otherwise is either misinformed, or a liar who is using the deaths of six innocent people for their own political gain. In other words, a fucking scumbag. There is really no other way to say it. The thing I find interesting when watching a lot of these individuals, is they really have no fucking idea what the men's rights movement is, its ideals, or what it stands for. They essentially have an image in their heads of what the MRM is and what MRAs are like, and this image is essentially just a straw man. They are not actually fighting against us, but against a straw man image of us, they actually have no idea who we are. To suggest that the men's rights movement promotes violence against women is ludicrous. We are a non-violent movement. Yet they are willing to pass judgment, based on word of mouth and propaganda, without ever looking at who we are, or what we are saying. Which is the real problem here. Men's rights activists are dangerous. I've interacted with some of them in the past and they're always trolling my videos and um, sending all sorts of horrible abuse and rape threats and telling me they wish I come to bodily harm. And as much as I like to pretend that it's, um, it's just trolling and it doesn't mean anything, I think that we all know that a lot of these men are quite serious and it's something that should be taken seriously. I have to ask the question. How does she know they are MRAs? Do they say? Hi, I'm an MRA, and I'm going to rape you. I think it's safe to say, she is making the assumption that these trolls are MRAs. I suspect she assumes anyone who disagrees with her must be an MRA. Or anyone who doesn't believe in her ideology exactly must be an MRA. Effectively it's like saying, anyone who isn't a Muslim must be a Christian. In other words, you are either with me or against me. And I'm going to label everyone against me as exactly the same. I've seen this a lot on Tumblr. Where anyone who asks a question, disagrees or makes a trollish comment, is instantly labeled an MRE. Who knew our numbers were so great? But that's not how reality works, is it? And going by some of her comments in this video, claiming that white males are toxic and dangerous for example, I'm not the least bit surprised that some people get pissed off at her. Would you expect any less of a reaction if someone made such comments about black females, for example, or any other such group? The sad thing is, she doesn't even realize that she is a bigot. This dude definitely had some fucking issues. Then there's somebody who replied to this other person. It's a bitchy, wo it's bitchy woman like you that made him kill. Blaming... his victims for his crimes. Stereotypical MRA type bullshit. As I was just saying, where exactly in that comment was it mentioned that the commenter was an MRA? When he says, stereotypical, he is correct, it is stereotypical in the same sense that, 
all men are cheaters is a stereotype, or all Jews are greedy, or all blacks are criminals, or all females are bitches, or all whites are racist, etc. etc. Just because something is a stereotype, doesn't mean that stereotype is accurate or realistic. He is making the assumption that the comment was left by an MRA, based on the MRA straw man he believes to be accurate. I've not heard or seen one MRA so far condemn the actions of this man in Santa Barbara. I've not seen any of that. No one's come out publicly that I know of and said that this is terrible and it's not what we represent. Somehow I don't think she is subscribed to too many MRA channels, and I'm pretty damn sure she didn't go looking to see if any MRAs came out to condemn his actions. I'm willing to bet she couldn't even name three prominent MRAs. And why the demand that we come out and condemn his actions? He was an MRA just as much as he was a Scientologist, or a Marxist, or Jamaican, or a proctologist. She is not asking for these random groups, that he also didn't belong to, to come out and condemn his actions. So why the MRA considering he had fucking nothing to do with us? And the truth is that the MRAs do represent that. MRAs, they represent male entitlement, and they're terrified of female power, that's what this problem is about. Those women, those dead women, exercised their power to say no to a man, and they were killed for it. And here we see more of the MRA straw man. And of course, she only mentions Elliot Rogers' female victims. So consider the third component, men's rights movement. The rhetoric of the men's rights movement includes rhetoric like the concept of involuntary celibacy. That is when a man can't get sex because a woman denies it to him. They even abbreviate it to incel. You know, I have been making these videos for over a year now, and have been exploring MRA and feminists' opinions for a bit longer, and in all that time, having watched countless MRA videos on YouTube, I can honestly say, I had no idea what incel was, nor do I recall ever hearing it, until just over a week ago, when Elliot Roger went on his rampage. So I am asking you, my subscribers, or any viewers in general, please educate me. Is this a PUA term, which has now been attributed to the MRM? Or is it something native to Reddit, which I do not use, or some other corner of the net? Or is it something that's been invented by the likes of Huffington Post, or the Daily Kos? Or is it an actual term used within the MRM which I have somehow missed? Because I honestly do not know. And like I said, until just over a week ago, I don't recall ever hearing the term. And there are statements online associated with men's rights movement wherein they say, if you have been made into an incel, it is normal to feel murder and murder-suicide urges. No, it's not. You notice he uses the word, associated, instead of saying these statements were made by MRAs? Let me give a word of advice to anyone out there who is interested in making videos. Get yourself a program to take screen captures, you can get one for free that will allow you to specify exactly what part of the screen you want captured. Because if you are going to claim that someone has said something, somewhere, you should at least provide some examples, and a link in the description area if possible. Given this guy's track record so far, considering the misinformation he has propagated about the MRM, why should I just take his word for it? How do I know what he is telling me is accurate and correct? How do I know these supposed statements were made by MRAs? All he has presented here is hearsay, and quite possibly he is only regurgitating what he has read, or heard elsewhere. I have no way of knowing. And considering his lack of accuracy, and hyperbole, so far, I have no reason to think this is anything different. You know who says that it's normal to feel murderous? Hate groups. Hate groups say that. In the case of men's rights activists, they are spreading a message of misogyny and violence against women, which in the case of Friday Night's killings looks like we're, we're very effective. Okay, I have got to be honest here, I really do not know if I should be outraged at how bullshit his statement is, or be amused at the sheer irony. You see, this guy's whole argument, that the MRM is a hate group, is based on his false belief that Elliot Roger was a member of the MRM, when in reality there is no evidence that Elliot Roger was an MRA, let alone was even aware of the MRM's existence. Yet, ironically, as I write this, the Men's Rights Conference in Detroit is in jeopardy due to threats of terrorism.
So who is making these terrorist threats? Well I'm guessing it's not the Boy Scouts of America. In fact I can only think of one group who would do it. Now I am not suggesting that all feminists, everywhere, are responsible for the actions of what is probably just a handful of extremist individuals. But can you see the irony? He looks to the internet and he finds the men's rights movement and he discovers that they are preaching a message of misogyny and violence against women and he goes with it. He was convinced by a hate group to go along with their hatred. That's what they are. And you should tell everyone that men's rights activists are part of a hate group who are dangerous, who should not be trusted. Yeah, unfortunately for your entire argument, nothing you just said is true. This shit is, I mean, like... Saying because these women wouldn't sleep with them, so women are obligated to sleep with men, so they wouldn't go on a crazy shooting rampage because no one would find a ignorant, psychotic son of a bitch attractive. MMRA logic. Oh look, it's another fucking straw man. Let me give you a tip, when someone has to make up bullshit. As opposed to using a real argument, it's because they don't have a real argument to use. It's that simple. Now maybe you're watching this video and you're a guy and you have associated yourself with the label of men's rights activist or the men's rights movement, but in your mind you think, what I really want is equality. I want men and women to be treated equally. I want men to be free of the gender constraints that society puts upon them. And I want no violence against anybody. If you think all of those things, you are mislabeling yourself. You are not a men's rights activist. You are a feminist. Because that's what feminists believe and want and act toward. Okay, I have a real simple question for anybody out there that claims that feminism is about equality for both sexes. Are you ready? Okay, here it is. If feminists are for equality between the sexes, then why have I never heard a feminist talk about the sentencing gap? Not one. Not a single one ever. In fact I have heard many feminists claim that the gap should be widened. So please explain to me, how males getting harsher sentences for exactly the same crimes committed by females, is equality? Please explain to me how creating more of a sentencing gap is equality? Oh you can't? Yeah, that's because it's an issue that affects only men, and feminists don't give two shits about it. That is why I will never call myself a fucking feminist. Just one reason of many actually. But you all fell for it. Now, we'll go onward. PUA, CIA, MRA. Paul Elam, MRA. And girls rights what? Plants. If you are wondering why Karen hasn't been making as many videos lately, it's because she has had a nasty aphid infestation. I probably should have put that last clip in the mental health section. But let's sum up the arguments offered by the social justice warriors and feminists. They think that we shouldn't consider mental health as a factor, even when the individual has a history of mental health issues because doing so would create an unfair stereotype towards the mentally ill. They then stereotype all white straight males as exactly the same, conclude that is the problem, and then create a non-existent connection to the MRM, in an attempt to use the deaths of six innocent people as a form of propaganda. Finally, they pat themselves on the back for doing such a good job. No evidence, no facts, no logic needed. And that's why I never drink the feminist poison Kool-Aid.
And then you've got wonderful songs like, for example, Blurred Lines, where it's completely acceptable for a man to state that he would like to tear a woman in two. This is just the perfect example where banter and jokes are really just thinly veiled, misogynistic, horrible things that men actually think about women. And it comes across as a joke, or as a song, or as entertainment, but all in all, this is ingrained in so many men that they think this way about women and that they feel that they have the right to be above them. <laughs> This woman, we're about to go there because this woman allegedly did. According to the Orange County DA's office, Catherine Q. Becker is accused of cutting off her husband's penis with a knife, uh, taking his penis and throwing it into the garbage disposal. <laughs> this is just the perfect example where banter and jokes are really just thinly veiled, misogynistic, horrible things that men actually think about women. She's been charged with felony torture and aggravated mayhem. Police say Becker attacked him because he filed for divorce. She's being held. She goes, that'll teach him. <laughs> And it comes across as a joke, or as a song, or as entertainment, but all in all, this is ingrained in so many men that they think this way about women and that they feel that they have the right to be above them. Um, I mean, I don't know the circumstances, I don't know why he filed for divorce, I don't know what was going on between them, however, <laughs> I do think it's quite fabulous. I mean... <laughs> This is just the perfect example where banter and jokes are really just thinly veiled, misogynistic, horrible things that men actually think about women. Can you just imagine that thing whizzing around the disposal? It's like hysterical! And it comes across as a joke, or as a song, or as entertainment, but all in all, this is ingrained in so many men that they think this way about women and that they feel that they have the right to be above them. But however, I think I would have just, depending on why she cut it off, I mean, it does depend on the reasons why. Does it? Yo, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, standard! <laughs> this is just the perfect example where banter and jokes are really just thinly veiled, misogynistic, horrible things that men actually think about women. It's it's it. I would have probably... reason. I'll, I'll think of one. But I'll just, <laughs> I would have just thrown it in the dog's bowl. Oh. And it comes across as a joke, or as a song, or as entertainment, but all in all, this is ingrained in so many men that they think this way about women and that they feel that they have the right to be above them. Why does a dog have to suffer? <laughs> it chewing on an old bone. <laughs> This is just the perfect example where banter and jokes are really just thinly veiled, misogynistic, horrible things that men actually think about women. But once you put it in the garbage disposal, I guess there's no reattaching that. Well, <laughs> and also, it's like, was she like, oh, I cut it up, but that's not enough. I'm going to throw it in the garbage disposal. And like, then turn it off. She wasn't satisfied by just cutting it off. <laughs> and it comes across as a joke, or as a song, or as entertainment, but all in all, this is ingrained in so many men that they think this way about women and that they feel that they have the right to be above them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I was also thinking, like, I wonder what their fights were like before this. Like, <laughs> that's that's a good point. what their fights were like, do you, oh, if you don't take out the trash, I'm going to cut your penis off. <laughs> right, did he see your this is just the perfect example where banter and jokes are really just thinly veiled, misogynistic, horrible things that men actually think about women. Come yeah. in. <laughs> there are signs. But totally. allegedly there's so much premeditation. There's poisoning the food and, or drugging him and sure. tying him up. And yeah. then when the police got there, she was like, he deserved it. He's in there. Right. <laughs> That's what she said. I do want to see the police. Then. She did. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> And it comes across as a joke, or as a song, or as entertainment, but all in all, this is ingrained in so many men that they think this way about women and that they feel that they have the right to be above them.